EPA WA Meteorologist Bobby Martinshire with your outlook for August 30th, 2019. We're going to cover the week ahead like we normally do in this video and also to talk about Hurricane Dorian, which is going to affect most likely the east coast of Florida. Uh, I want to get through our local forecast here first. We have a very warm day ahead today with uh, mostly sunny skies at least to start and then this afternoon probably partly cloudy uh as these front this front works its way through this afternoon and evening there's a little weak front here off to the north might have enough precipitation with it to squeeze out an isolated shower and that would be uh, mainly across northeast pa but further south you might have a stray shower as well as until that front completely moves through it's only like a couple hour period uh, during the course of the afternoon, maybe mid to late afternoon, then you have that opportunity. Uh, but we'll have uh, an opportunity for a shower nevertheless. So I don't want to say mostly sunny, like our local forecast show. We don't have it in the forecast graphics because it's not high enough of a chance. But there is a chance for a uh, shower to come through in some areas later today. And we can see that here on uh, on the NAM. Here is looking at the NAM high res future simulated radar at 2 p.m. You can see just a few isolated showers here across northeast PA as we move forward in the afternoon. You can see these little pop-up stuff not much it's very brief very light but it is precipitation nevertheless so i don't want to discount the fact that there's this is a possibility here looking at 5 p.m uh, as we get toward the uh, later in the evening you don't see anything at all so there's a possibility for a very brief shower to come through not a real big deal but i didn't want to say just hey it's gonna be mostly sunny today no chance of precip because if you're going to get rain you know just for even for a brief time it's still not mostly sunny. So uh, just so you understand how that's going to work today, as we get into Saturday, this front is now clear. We're going to have temperatures back down a little bit. Today's in the mid-upper 80s for highs, uh, north to south. And then when we get to uh, Saturday, we're in kind of 80, 82-ish, but lower humidity uh, on Saturday as well, partly cloudy skies. And then Sunday, uh, Sunday we had in the local forecast, but in some areas we had a chance for a late day shower or storm. It looks like the newer guidance here, this is using the GFS, is now suggesting it's going to keep stay west in western Pennsylvania. So we're not going to be dealing with it here on Sunday. It looks like just partly to mostly cloudy skies later in the day and no chance for precipitation at all. Okay, so we'll revisit this over the next couple of days, but it looks like the trend is that Sunday is going to be a dry day as well. Uh, but Monday, Labor Day holiday itself does not look that way. It looks like some scattered showers in the morning for some at least interior areas and then uh, scattered thunderstorms here during the afternoon. So you will have the opportunity for showers, uh, mostly cloudy skies here on the actual holiday, Labor Day Monday. But if you're going to have anything planned this weekend, I would plan it around, uh, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday versus Monday. Monday looks like the day that we will have a little bit of issues with uh, some any outdoor plants. Okay, so that's uh, once that goes through, we are partly cloudy here on Tuesday. Temperatures will remain warm and very warm here on Tuesday, or excuse me, Wednesday, ahead of this next frontal boundary, which will come through later in the day with an isolated or scattered thunderstorms with this actual cold front that comes through. Ahead of it, you're going to have temperatures kind of mid to upper 80s and maybe even touching 90 down by Philadelphia for highs, uh, Philadelphia metro area and southern interior, southern Jersey and Delaware. This cold front moves through overnight, and then we high pressure builds in behind it for Thursday, and we are mostly sunny. This right here, of course, is Dorian. This is actually post landfall. This is looking at next Thursday. Uh, there is an opportunity to get some uh, fringe effects from this. Let me get uh, move that ahead here. Some fringe effects from this uh, right along the coastal areas. We're going to watch this closely for any remnants. This would be remnants at this point. Uh, it would be heading into maybe next Friday, Saturday time frame, uh, right along the coastline. So we'll watch this closely. Of course, the the uh, big concern of the last couple of days everybody's talking about is Hurricane Dorian and what's it going to do. Now, the GFS, the reason I'm using this in the video uh, is for a good reason, because we have uh, this is Hurricane Dorian sitting out here. Uh, Puerto Rico is here. Here's the Dominican Republic. It is well northwest of that. It's still moving to the northwest at 12 miles per hour. This has been upgraded to a Category 2 with the 11, uh, 11 p.m. National Hurricane Center advisory. And it's only 10 miles per hour away from a major hurricane, which is a Category 3. All right. And the general idea here is this going to continue off to the northwest and then it's going to eventually make a turn uh, toward the North Bahamas and head toward the Florida coastline somewhere right about here. Now, I'm pointing right at Jupiter here. Uh, that's where that is. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to hit right there. It could be anywhere along the east coast of Florida. But we, I, when I talked to you yesterday about where my gut feeling was, which I don't usually give in these kind of videos. I usually reserve those for like the Weather Weekly videos we do in the winter. Uh, as far as opinion-based stuff, I'm giving you an opinion. 
and I did that yesterday. I'm going to hold to that today that I still think it's going to be between West Palm Beach and the Space Coast up here by Cape Canaveral. Somewhere in between there is going to be a landfall point, which really isn't going to be that big of a deal in the grand scheme because I mean, it's going to be so big and, uh, and so massive and uh, uh, very powerful. Uh, this, the National Hurricane Center is now expecting this to be a Category 4, strong Category 4 system at landfall. Uh, by, and I, I totally agree with him on that as far as intensity goes. I wouldn't be surprised if it's even flirting with five. I don't think it gets to a five, but it might be flirting with it. It might be awfully close. And uh, the, the we're, we were talking about in the last couple of videos here, what was going to be the inhibiting factors of this and what would keep it from growing too fast. One of, this, one of them was this upper level low, which has really turned out to be not that big of a deal. Uh, there's a little bit of shearing going into the system right now, uh, but we've seen... Uh, some dry air adjusting from that upper level low being here, uh, but we've seen the uh, the hurricane actually increase intensity from 90 miles per hour, the previous advisory, to 105 miles per hour. Uh, and you might be watching this on Friday morning. It might have already been upgraded to a major hurricane category three by that point. This is not really doing too much to inhibit the growth of Dorian. So uh, we have a ridge building over the top. There's a very, very favorable environment on the way, especially with the, the uh, warm bath waters out here that's going to be going through just east and over the Bahamas. There's a very, uh, very good area for it to develop and continue to develop like it is. The National Hurricane Center uh, forecaster this evening, I wanted to share this with you. National forecast, uh, Hurricane Center forecaster is uh, meteorologist Eric Blake. Okay, And in his discussion, the very last line of the discussion, he says, quote, Unfortunately, I don't see any large-scale factors that would prevent Dorian from becoming an extremely dangerous Category 4 hurricane during the next few days. And I concur with that because there's really not too much to limit the growth of this system as it heads toward the Florida coast. So if you have any family, friends that are, or, or, that are along the eastern coast, anywhere along the east coast of Florida, make sure they pay attention to this because this is a very, uh, very critical that uh, there's probably going to be evacuation orders that are going to be going into play here. Uh, here's that upper level below, moving off to the south and west, not really doing anything that, to hamper the development of Dorian as it moves off to the west-northwest. And eventually, it goes over the northern Bahamas. This is still probably a Category 4 hurricane by that uh, point, and with 140 mile-per-hour winds or thereabout, or that's what it's projected to do. And the GFS is now taking this into uh, the West Palm Beach area. Okay, this is the latest GFS that ran this evening. Uh, now, the reason I'm showing the GFS and not the European model uh, is uh, I know the European model has superior physics and all that stuff, but we did have about 50 or, or so drops, drop sons go into the GFS or go into the uh, zero Z models this evening, the ones I'm using right now. So it was integrated into it. That's uh, those drops they do that measures. Uh, air pressure, wind speed, and a whole bunch of different things that they drop into the storm. There's 50 of those drops. Uh, they record the information and they send it back to the supercomputers so they can ingest that data and adjust accordingly downstream. So this is a new run of the GFS this evening, and it takes it a little bit, a lot further south than it did earlier when it was all the way up by uh, north of the Space Coast here. Quite a, quite a jump here. And so it's, it's, it's recognizing that this storm will be a little slower and will also come in further south and this is looking at monday night when it makes would when it would make landfall according to the gfs here and then the gfs does take it across florida and then eventually turns it to the north and then northeast and that's when we would have to watch it toward the end of the next week for any fringe impacts along the coastal regions but it does look like i'm still holding that idea my gut feeling from yesterday between west palm beach and and uh, cape canaveral i still think that is the uh, area somewhere in between there that will get hit there's several places in between there that you can pick and uh, pick your favorite location and any one of those could be right. Okay, so I still think that area is going to be ground zero for a landfall. Uh, we still have some models that are a lot further north instead of being down here like the GFS has it by West Palm Beach, which is right about here. It has uh, HWRF. This is a hurricane specialty model that runs in a short term and it takes it up into just south of Cape Canaveral here. Uh, by Melbourne or thereabouts. So uh, there is a lot and a lot of models in play uh, with different scenarios. The uh, European model took it a little bit further south and did one of these numbers here today and parallel right along the coastline like this. That was the European track. Uh, I didn't. I don't have the new overnight guidance that comes in about uh, two hours, but I didn't want to wait that long to produce the video. So a lot of different tracks here, a lot of different possibilities. I don't like the European track that that ran today. 
I still think it's going to be somewhere between West Palm Beach and uh, the Space Coast here, like uh, near Daytona Beach or Cape Canaveral, something like that. So uh, we'll continue to follow this in the next couple of days. We do have vested interest down here with our clients, so we, that's why we're spending so much time on this. Uh, but uh, it is a very strong hurricane already, Category 2. Uh, could be a Category 2 or expected to be a Category 3 here on Friday. And then a Category 4 uh, one might, might be achieved already by Saturday. So we'll keep a close eye on this as it makes a close uh, a close approach here on the east coast of Florida and keep you updated with the next video, which is expected tomorrow. I'm EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Martridge. That is your outlook for August 30th, 2019. Have a great Friday.